Good morning everybody, I am in Glasgow this morning. Today's video is going to be a video on three things to do in Glasgow. I have done one of these before in Edinburgh, they did quite well so I will link it up here somewhere but today we're doing three things to do in Glasgow so that you can do Glasgow on a budget. I might be biased because I'm from Glasgow but I think if I did one of these for Edinburgh I need to do one for Glasgow. We are in Glasgow Botanic Gardens this morning, I've met up with two of my friends. <laughs> Hello! Hello. I'm his followers. If you don't recognise, this is Kaylee and this is Eve. We are just sitting down on a bench. We had a little picnic and now we're going to head into the glass houses and take a walk around. Hoping to film it maybe over two different days so that I can make it longer. Quite a nice day today. It's not too sunny but it's quite warm. It's like 20 degrees. Come inside the first greenhouse. Filmed the opening hours because they've got different ones for winter time. Oh, it's warm in here. Look, isn't it lovely? A wholesome day out. The grounds of the Botanic Gardens are open from 7am till dusk all year. However, the Kibble Palace and the Glass Houses are open from 10am to 6pm in summer, 10am to 4pm in winter. What do they say about big leaves? What do they say about big leaves, Kaylee? Big trunks. <laughs> That's not a very big trunk though. It was in 1817 that Thomas Hopkirk, a distinguished Glasgow botanist, founded the Botanic Gardens with the support of a number of local dignitaries and the University of Glasgow. The gardens were originally laid out on an eight-acre site at Sandyford at the western end of Sucky Hall Street. The park also has free public toilets. They are quite small, but it's quite handy to know that if you are near there, there are free public toilets to use. We've left our first greenhouse there, heading to the main one on our way out, and then we might walk towards Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum for the second part. Obviously both all of these glass houses are free to enter. I've already told you the opening times. This is part of the park and it's actually just like a lovely park to go and see in the summer anyway. Like as you can see it's quite busy. People come here for picnics and things. Really nice place to hang out. They've got like a little food truck and a children's playground. The gardens flourished to such an extent that in 1839 a new site to the west of the city on the banks of the River Kelvin was purchased to house the rapidly expanding collection. In 1842, the new gardens opened on their present site. The Kibble Palace, which now houses a forest of tree ferns, was originally a private conservatory located at Culper on Loch Long. It was moved to its present site at 1873 and was first used as a concert hall and meeting space, hosting celebrated speakers such as Gladstone and Disraeli. Glasgow Corporation took over the gardens in 1891, agreeing that they should continue as a botanic garden and maintain links with the university. I do want to point out that I filmed these clips in in July 2022 which is in the middle of the Scottish summer holidays so it can get busy in the summer holiday times especially if the weather is really good. Today the weather wasn't amazing so it wasn't as busy as it can get but just keep an eye on the summer holiday times in Scotland. We've just left the book fair. Eve picked up a book that was 3 50 that was really nice to go in. Now we're going to leave Botanic Gardens and walk to Kelvin Grove, but it's getting a little bit busier here. Lovely, there's so many families here. Nice for a family day out. It feels very peaceful. It's really nice to just have a big green space in the middle of the city. It's in Glasgow's West End, which is quite close to a lot of the other tourist attractions. So I think it would be a great place to hang out for a day if you were coming to Glasgow. Let's walk about 20 minutes and then we'll get to Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum. We have made it to Kelvin Grove Art Gallery Museum. We're just sitting having a little another little picnic in the grounds. It's brightened up a little bit. I love the architecture of it as well. Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum opened in 1901 and is a firm favourite with local people and visitors. It has stunning architecture and a family friendly atmosphere. The front entrance was closed when we went and I believe it currently still is. However, you can just walk around the back to the car park and there is an entrance there as well that is open. They have 22 galleries and have everything from art to animals, ancient Egypt to Charles Rainey Mackintosh and they have a change program of temporary exhibitions and displays however they will charge you for any exhibitions that are on but you totally don't have to go and see those bits. There is no need to book any tickets for coming to see the gallery and it is open from Monday to Thursday and Saturday 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Friday and Sunday 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Yeah, 
It's now been a couple of weeks. I'm going to film a second part to this video because it's been another weekend and I'm ready to explore more of Glasgow. This weekend I've got another friend joining me, which is a familiar face. Hi guys! Lauren's back! Welcome you might recognise Lauren from our trips to Thailand and Sri Lanka. Backpacking Queens. Backpacking Queens. And now we are back I've got in a Glasgow. Bag now. Tote bag queen. <laughs> She's a tote bag queen. Today we are going to be exploring the Glasgow Cathedral and the Necropolis. So the first part of this video was Botanics and Kiln Grove. Now we're exploring some more parts. We are just outside of Glasgow Cathedral. Should we go there first? Yeah. Okay, I think well. we can go in. I don't really know too much about it, so I'm going to like film a voiceover on the montage. I've got a cross on my necklace. Where is it? They'll let you in now. Where is it? Is yeah. it I think it's like one of the oldest buildings in Glasgow possibly. So I'm really excited to go in. Hopefully we can go in. I'm not even sure if we can. Take a look around and then we'll head to the Necropolis. But these are two more of the free things that you can do in Glasgow. Gay mm -hmm. hospital. Oh my god, gay rights. That's a really nice building. Go so forest, go! I love a cobbled street. I love a cobbled moment. <laughs> She's giving cobbles. Absolutely stunning, so it is. We're not even in yet, but I think I mixed up my facts. I think this it's the oldest building in Glasgow, but it's pretty not fresh, but fresh. Like it looks that a better, it looks in a better fresh. state than that that one. Though. So it turns out that if you don't have a pre-booked ticket, they're full for this hour. So it says we can come back at two to three p.m. So we're going to go to the Necropolis first. Yeah. Try again, and two. So Wait, fingers crossed that we can go back. This is Glasgow Cathedral. I took a little clip of some of the things they said as staff for winter hours, but it should have shown the opening hours and admission is free. Oh, this is lovely. There's so many dogs out today. Aww. It's also a lovely day, so everything in Glasgow looks better when it's sunny. We are just outside the Glasgow Necropolis, about to go on a lovely date to the graveyard. <laughs> I've got a little board with the facts, so I'll film it, but the Necropolis has been described as a unique representation of Victorian Glasgow, built when Glasgow was the second city of the empire. It reflects the feeling of confidence and wealth and security of that time. So basically the necropolis is famous because it is a cemetery but it's a cemetery of like really wealthy people throughout the Victorians so it's like a really fancy cemetery. All the really rich famous Glasgow people were buried here in the Victorian times. It's a bit of a trek. This bit's quite steep but I think the view from the top will be worth it. It's actually looking pretty cool so far. Like these are really elaborate like headstones. Oh my god, I saw this account on TikTok once that like they clean the headstones with power wash and they tell you like the story of the dead person at the same time. It was really cool. Look at the size of some of these. up to the highest point of the necropolis. Wow. Amazing. Well this is I gonna be bad wind noise. So like one high line, you know what I mean? Yeah. This is really cool. And there's quite a lot of tourists around here. It's quite nice to like be around tourists. We kind of feel like we're on holiday. As you can see it looks absolutely massive as well. I don't think we're going to be able to see all of it because the way back there, it goes back so far. But this is amazing. You can see a really good view of Glasgow Cathedral and the Royal Infirmary. So much of Glasgow. Considering how old these graves are, like I've seen some of them that are 1800s, obviously Victorian period and early 1900s. They're pretty well kept. You can't really read a lot of the text, but there's no litter here. Like the grounds are really nice. And the actual gravestones themselves seem really well tended to. The grass is like obviously really well cut and it's massive. Like I don't think we're gonna get all of it in today. Like I don't know if you can see how many graves there are. I wonder if there's like a statistic of how many people are buried here. If there is, I will put it on screen. A lot of these people are like rich people, religious people. Oh my god, that's a nice that's name. Nice. Emily Isabella Ferry. See the 1800s to me, I know like so much about America that time, but I don't really know much about the UK. Yeah. So well, like all these people have been buried, there was like a fucking civil war going on in America and like that's true. slavery and all that. 
Yeah. Which they, but they just, this seems like so much more recent than that. Yeah, that's true. But I suppose I'm slavery like, here, but it's just a bit more. I'm secret. really bad at correlating what happened yeah, around the same time. Yeah, definitely. Like, there's this weird fact, like, Anne Frank was alive at the same time as, like, Martin Luther King or yeah. something like that. And I feel like when you line up different countries' histories at the same time, it really blows your yeah. mind. It's now 1.53, so I think we should maybe start with making yeah. our way back down towards the, the Glasgow Cathedral. Cathedral and hopefully we can get let into the two to three slot. So it's for the dead people. This is um, actually the dead centre of Glasgow. People are dying to get in here. They're that insensitive. They died ages ago. Yeah, that doesn't count. One day I'll change your mind. We're walking up to the cathedral again. I don't see the sign outside this time, so I think we can get in. lot bigger than I originally thought. Like, don't you think I rate is? this church? Yes, I rate this church. I think it's like a lot bigger than it looks from yeah. the outside. No, it looks really like, massive from outside. And I didn't know so that... There's so many sections. Yeah, so we're in the underground bit right now with St Mungo's tomb, which I didn't even know was in here, so that's pretty cool. Oh, really cool. Beautiful, obviously, I love being in a church. There's like a church bit with the pews at the back, but then the front bit, and there's loads of like signs about all the history and stuff, so it's actually really cool. Everything is free, even downstairs, which I thought was pretty cool, yeah. because in other churches in Europe, when I've been, like the main bit is free, but if you want to come down to something like the tombs below, you'd probably have to pay. Not too busy either. What have they got in the gift shop, Lauren? Oh, it's not Oh, you. Oh, that's, that's so cute. Like if you came yeah. as a tourist, that is really cute. That would be such a cute thing to get. Piper bear. Oh, I like these ones, the little kick ones. The story of Scotland. <gasps> I love him. My piping bear. <laughs> we have just left the Glasgow Cathedral. Had a cool gift shop, didn't it? They did have very nice nationalist yeah. items. Um, I was actually really surprised by Glasgow Cathedral. I thought like, oh, just be a standard church. But we, we enjoyed it very much, didn't we? <laughs> Lauren does like a uh, church. I don't like the church. There was a lot more like to see and do than I expected in there and good bits of information for tourists coming. And as you can see, all the tour groups are behind me here. I'm going to wrap up today's video here. I hope you enjoyed my video on free things to do in Glasgow and I gave you some ideas. Me and Lauren really enjoyed it and we've both never been to the Necropolis or Glasgow Cathedral before. So this was really good for us as well. I love like exploring your own backyard. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll be back next week with a brand new video. Bye guys.